feel it. We are addicted to having other people be involved in our own emotional work. We are addicted because we want certain things from them. We want them to make us feel safe. We want to know that because someone else is going through it, it means that my feeling is valid. We want to know that because someone else is experiencing a similar thing or they've had an emotion this week, that that means I'm allowed to have one too. And it's all just rubbish actually. It's all just our fear dictating our f further progress. And what are the fears? They are the fears you don't see. The fear of other people's approval. The fear of acceptance. The fear of not having any acceptance. The fear of not having other people like you. The fear that other people don't agree with you and you're the only person on the planet who actually feels that particular thing. The fear that you're stupid, that you're strange, that you're crazy, that you're weird. That you're All of these fears are the fears that you try to make go away by having somebody else come along and have a chat with them about your feelings. You're making all, so, so you're actually in addiction dealing with your emotion. Now, can you really ever deal with an emotion while you're in addiction? Of course you can't. You're only going to be dealing with the emotion that your fear is allowing you to deal with. So for, for many, I feel what's going on is this. Our fear has become like a prison, right, of our own making. So you imagine, for many of us, this is what it's like. This is what it's like. We've got this prison. And our fear, by the way, dictates how big the prison is. So the less fear we have, the bigger the prison is. In other words, we have more freedom. Right? The more fear we have, the smaller the prison is. In other words, it's like a solitary confinement cell when our fear is very, very large. And we have stuck ourselves inside of this. We are constrained by this prison that we have created, that our fear dictates. And while that remains the case, you will only allow yourself, even when you discover divine truth and you discover the way to God is... A, through emotional change, you will find that you will only allow yourself experience the, to experience emotion that the boundaries of your fear will accept. So if your fear is very large, your cell will be very small, and the boundaries of your fear, that what your fear will allow you to actually process emotionally, will be very small, very tight. You'll only be able to get into certain things emotionally and work the way through them in that boundary. If your fear is, you know, is less than that, then your boundaries might be larger, but you still have boundaries. And everything outside of this boundary, this is what I see for many, is everything outside of the boundary is the real stuff that's going to help your relationship with God. Feeling that is going to help your relationship with God the most. Feeling this and anything inside of it will only do what? It will only let you have a relationship with God that's constrained by exactly the same boundary. That's all it's going to do. Your whole life, for the rest of your life, will be dictated to by what your fear will allow you to experience. And unless that changes... Unless something changes where your fear and what it allows you to experience grows, nothing will change in your life. And so what I see many of you doing is you allow certain emotions. So that might be an emotion of grief. So you, you, know, you, you cry that much to that boundary. And that might be the direction of your grief. You cry to that boundary, you will cry no more. Because your fear is telling you to stop. And you honour your fear before you honour anything else. You don't honour God there, you don't honour love, you don't have faith, you don't honour humility, you don't want more truth in that place. You only will allow yourself to experience grief to that point. That's it. <clears throat> Some of you will only allow yourself to experience grief if, if it's a spirit with you. In other words, you're experiencing the grief of spirits who are attracted to you or attached to you before you will let yourself feel any of your own grief. 
So, you know, for many of you, all of the crying that you've ever done, it wasn't yours. That seems to be a waste. Right? And the reason why you do that is because your fear will only let you do that. So it's your fear. You want somebody to be with you all the time when you experience an emotion. And if it's not a person, you prefer it to be a spirit person. Right? And so you let yourself process that way. So some of you are complete denial of this level of control that you have over your lives with your fear. 